Hi everybody, thanks for watching. I wanted to go ahead and make this video kind of as a follow-up to my last video I made about getting a job as a web developer. Now, if you watch my last video, you'll see that the one thing that I didn't stop talking about over and over and over again was the importance of working on and completing personal projects and how I feel that that was the main thing that contributed to me actually getting my first job as a web developer. You know, I think it was really important that in an interview setting, I was able to sort of swing the fact that I didn't have any professional experience to more of that I can talk about personal projects, talk about an issue that I was having, you know, the steps I took to complete it, and obviously having a finished product and a working website or a single page application there to actually show my interviewer. So I wanted to just list out some of the projects that I'd worked on when I was beginning to learn to code and learning to build websites. Hopefully it would give you a bit of inspiration um, for all intents, you know, take my projects, build a clone, copy the code, do whatever you want with them, like make them better, I hope. Like I put a link down below for my GitHub profile all the stuff I worked on is there. All the code is open source. Do whatever you want with it, as far as I'm concerned. I was about month three of my boot camp when I really started, you know, taking doing projects seriously and started working on them in my own time, above and beyond just the homework that I was getting from my boot camp. Now, at this point, I knew HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And obviously, as my course went along as I you know gained more confidence and learnt more I also started building projects using AngularJS which is the main web framework that we're learning or we learn as part of the bootcamp. I even went so far as, as part of a bootcamp project building a full stack app in AngularJS, Node, Express and Mongo. So the first two websites I ever built was my own personal website which in the beginning was literally uh, an HTML file with a list of bullet points and a CSS file that didn't really add much to it. And I also built a gallery website for my dad, who is a bit of an artist. So I put together, again, just an HTML page with CSS and some images. That's it. That's what I had as my first two projects. But to expand on that a little bit, start at home. Build your own website. Even if the version one is absolute trash, build it. Who cares? Um, you know, Ask your parents, ask your siblings if there's anything that they would like to see, anything that they'd like to use. You never know, they might come up with a great idea. Now, after I built my own website, my dad's website, I started thinking, okay, how can I incorporate JavaScript into the story here? Um, and I noticed around Israel, obviously, there's like lotto boobs all over the place. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to have a little application that on a click of a button, you can get six random numbers and a bonus number to play the lotto with? So that's what I did. I built that in JavaScript. And one of the national holidays here in Israel, yeah, everyone had the day off. So me and a few friends, we wanted to play a board game. We got everything out. You know, we set up the board. We realized there weren't any dice. So at that point, I became very antisocial for the next few hours. I disappeared off to my laptop. And I sat there and I wrote a program in JavaScript to simulate two dice rolling. Like if you, the outcome of two dice. So in terms of family, my brother is a chef. Now, I was back in the UK visiting him, uh, talking about work and seeing how everything was going, and he was kind of complaining that every week he had to build a new menu for the restaurant he works in out of a bank of about 200 different dishes, and he said it was really annoying having to work on it every weekend in Excel, uh, coming up with a new idea. So at that point, I'd learned jQuery and JavaScript, and I thought, okay, seems like a cool idea for something that I could build and automate. Um, it was really difficult to build it at that point, um, but eventually I built him a product where on the click of a button, he can generate a brand new random menu um, for every week. So it cut his work instead of, you know, an hour every weekend into you know, five minutes, clicking a button, picking random menu items. On the bootcamp, we learned Bootstrap, obviously, the uh, front end framework for CSS to make sites responsive. So once we'd learned that framework, we were given the task of building a three-page website, essentially, for a travel company uh, that was not only responsive and included a lot of bootstrap UI elements, also used the Ajax property in JavaScript and jQuery to call an API to get the weather for eight major cities around the world. Playlist Thim is the full stack app that I built in Angular, Mongo, Node, and Express. Uh, it's basically, again, kind of a to-do list. It's a list where you can add songs to a playlist or add YouTube videos to a playlist. 
and then save that in your in the database under your profile anybody can open a profile it's all you know for individuals but that was the first real full stack app that i built another thing i like to recommend to people and when building projects is you know look around like do you have a favorite restaurant that you go to do you have a shop that you go to all the time that doesn't have a website or they might have a facebook page but they don't have a website uh, so i took that to heart i've got a restaurant that i love here in israel in tel aviv it's called hanoi they have a Facebook page, but they don't have a website. So I went onto their Facebook page. I got a load of pictures. I got all the info about the restaurant. And using Angular, I built a website or like a landing page for this restaurant. I also found another great resource for finding ideas and kind of getting ideas for projects are two websites called Free Code Camp and The Odin Project. They're both websites that exist as curriculums for people to come and learn full stack web development on their own. But obviously they also have a ton of projects there that you can you know either do along as part of the course take the idea clone it or just build on top of it and finally i found a blog by a woman called jennifer dewalt and the blog essentially consisted of her building a project a day for 180 days so on her website there's a list of 180 different projects that she worked on that was an amazing resource for me and it helped jog my mind into coming up with ideas of my own based on her projects, but also looking at her projects and saying, okay, let's try and build this from scratch, like cloning her projects essentially. So when I actually come to build a project, like how do I break it down step by step? Like the first thing I find when coming up with a project idea is actually finding an issue that I'm having or finding a problem and then working out how I can solve it in my case using JavaScript. Now, once I've got an idea set in my head about what I wanna do, before I touch a computer, I take a piece of paper and a pen and I start writing on paper what i want it to actually be what i what i want to see whether it be ui elements whether it be a quick sketch of how i want the ui to look uh, i write down kind of the pseudo code for the main meat of the javascript so i basically just say for example in the lotto numbers app i say okay i have a blank screen for the user on the click of a button i want to go in sort through an array of random numbers pull out six or seven, and then display that to the user. Another great resource is an API. There are tons of free APIs out there on the internet that you can basically use and call and get a ton of data just dumped back to you in JSON format, which is an amazing way to work with data and learn how to display data in, a, in you know, a, a nice way on a website. You gotta be flexible with the projects that you're working on. Um, you know, sometimes you might have an idea for something you just don't have the skill set to complete yet. It's not a problem. Just work up to the point where you feel comfortable and you know how to do. Don't be afraid to change a plan halfway through. If you're finding something difficult, again, you know, just don't be afraid to say, okay, I'm just going to stop here and leave it with what I've done so far and build that and make that as best as it can be. And once I learn or get further down my curriculum, I can then build out part two to that same project. Everybody learns at their own pace, so take it easy. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't necessarily listen to other people. Don't let them put you down. If someone's giving you constructive criticism or if someone's criticizing you, take that as a positive, like take that as a way to learn. Um, but at the end of the day, you should hopefully be doing this for yourself and you should hopefully be trying to build stuff for your own use and maybe for your family. So don't be worried too much about if something doesn't look amazing or if it doesn't work exactly how you wanted it to, if you finish a project and you finalize what you wanted to do in the beginning, that's enough. Learn how to use Google, <laughs> which is a really important skill. Um, if you are having an issue, you're probably not the first person to be having it. Chances are somebody else has been A, trying to build what you're building before, or they're trying to do it exactly the same way as you're doing it. So chances are they've also had an issue and they've also asked Google. So when searching Google for a solution to an issue you might be having, I like to break it down to kind of three steps. You write the tech name, the keyword, and then the problem you're having. So for example, I could write JavaScript, arrays, how do I find a random number from an array? Something like that. And lastly, please put your hands together for Stack Overflow. 
I can't stress this enough. This is the holy grail of learning programming. When I say use Stack Overflow, don't just go in and look for the first answer with a green V, take it and work with it. Be involved in the community there. Now, I'm a beginner still. I'm not answering people's questions there. But what I am doing is I'm upvoting answers that are right. I'm upvoting answers that work for me. I'm leaving people comments saying thanks for providing the solution. Also, sometimes I might go scroll a little bit further down the page, look for an answer that doesn't have a green tick. Try with their solution. If that works, upvote it. Leave them a bit of feedback saying that worked for me. Just become involved in the community, basically, because that's the best way to make Stack Overflow an even better resource is by us, the users, actually contributing to it. So at this point, I'd like to point out that despite of being really proud of you know getting a job as a web developer with no professional experience or no degree, you know, I'm really proud of myself for doing that. And I might look back now at the projects or the code that I wrote when I was first starting to learn, and it's full of bugs, it's full of issues, there's no comments, you know, I'm not using object-oriented principles, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I take from that is a real sense of pride, because that's the whole fun of learning to code, that's the whole fun of learning something, is that once you get to a point where you feel you're pretty advanced, that you can look back at what you've done and you can really see the path that you took to get where you are today. Now, another thing I'd like to point out in my own personal experience is that I don't feel web design is my strong suit. Most of the UI that I've built for projects that I've done is absolutely terrible. And I say that not looking back and feeling proud. Like I say that as like, it's terrible. It's bad design, it's bad colors, it's a lot of strong one pixel borders. It doesn't look the best, but I'm still learning design. So I can always go back afterwards and adapt and use CSS to make stuff look better. Now you can also use that as a plus in a job interview. Uh, you know, in job interviews, you have the classic question of, oh, what's something you're not good at? Or how do you feel you can prove in something on your life? Well, I can say, and I have said in job interviews, um, you know, I don't feel web design is my strong suit, but it's something I'm really actively working on and actively working on making better. And finally, just have fun. That's the whole point of learning is to have fun and just enjoy what you're doing. Now again, I'll leave a list in the info box down below of the projects that I've worked on, links to uh, Free Code Camp, the Odin Project, the Jennifer DeWalt blog, a link to my GitHub. So you can really go there, look through what I've done, look through what other people have done. And just start working there and start working on projects from that baseline, basically. And if you've done anything, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you've worked on. I'd really love to see, you know, what other people at my level are working on so we can sort of, you know, feel like we're a part of a community of beginners. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.